Welcome back to the channel guys. In today's video, I go about showing you how to make this garden obelisk trellis. I got the idea and the plans from Matthew Peach over at his channel. I'll leave a link down to the description down below to his channel and the video of his build. What I did for my build, exact same build, same design, except mine's a little shorter. Mine comes out to be about six feet instead of seven feet. And all I did was take his measurements and just cut, cut them down a little bit. Super easy to make, super fun project. I know it may look a little discouraging with all the angles and the bevels, but I promise you it's really easy and didn't take too long. I even went about and made the base cap for the top and the decorative piece. Like I said, super easy, super fun to make, so just follow along for the video, and I'll show you how I made it, and I hope you enjoy it. All right, guys, to start off this project, I started off with two two by sixes. It's actually made for all the material that I would need for this project. I ripped down the two by sixes into one and a half pieces to give me my two by twos. This gave me six two by twos, and out of those six, I chose the four straightest pieces to use and the other two that I had left over, I used those for the smaller square pieces that would be the accent pieces for the obelisk. And at the end of all that ripping down of the two by twos, well two by sixes, I was left over with some smaller, thinner pieces that I used as the one and a half, well, they came out to be three quarters by one and a half inches. And I use those pieces to be the smaller pointed pieces on this on each side of the trellis. After ripping down those two by six pieces into my individual pieces, I took everything over to the miner saw and that's where I cut everything down to length. I started off with the longest pieces would which would be the four uprights. I cut each of those down to seven feet long. Later on, I realized that I wanted to make the trellis a little shorter, so I came back and took some off. I think I took about 16 inches off at the end of it. All right, so the next thing I did is I took my one by twos and I measured out the center. And when marking out that center, it allowed me to make the point of where I was gonna make the two 45 angle cuts at the end of these. Again, for these accent pieces, I started off with the measurements that Matthew Peach used in his video, but after I cut down my upright pieces to account for the six foot trellis, I went and measured out an appropriate length for these accent pieces so they wouldn't be too long. Next thing on the list, was to cut the angles on the feet or the uprights of the trellis. So these had a seven degree miter and a seven degree bevel on each side. And as far as where the cuts went, I took each upright, cut it at one end, and then I would just slide the upright down my miter saw and make that same cut on the other side. So they were basically the same cut, same angle, same everything, just on each side. After cutting those angles on those uprights, the next thing was to cut the square pieces, well, the four pieces that would make up the square going up the trellis itself. Each of these pieces still had a seven degree bevel, except the miter was turned over to a 45 degree angle. So the way I went about cutting these was I would cut the miter at one side, measure out the length that I needed, which in this case was 10 inches. And then I would turn the piece twice and get that same miter cut on the other end of the piece. After cutting, after making the first cut, the first piece, I would set up a stop block just to make repeated cuts a little easier and faster. So for my six foot trellis, I ended up doing three of these squares instead of four. These first pieces that I'm cutting were cut at 10 inches long. The next pieces were cut at 15 inches long. And then the final pieces were at 20 inches long. And like I said, these had, these still had a seven degree bevel, but had a miter of 45.
after having all of the building components for the trellis itself cut, I cut up some pieces, some, some scrap pieces that I had left over of the one, one and a half by one and a half pieces. And I squared those up on a table saw, cut them down the length, maybe I think that they were about six inches, maybe six and a half inches long. And these were going to be used to be glued up and make a three by three post in order for me to shape out the post cap. As for the glue up, nothing crazy. I just used a brush and some type on three, which is good for outdoor elements. And I just added glue to two of the sides of each small piece and then just put everything together, clamped it real good and I set it out to let it dry for a while. After all that was glued up, the next thing to be done was to build the squares themselves. The 10 inch, the 15 inch, and the 20 inch squares out of those pieces that we cut up and had the angles and the bevels on. Again, I used Type On 3 since this would be outside. Not that it really matters since I was going to use screws and brad nails all throughout this process. The glue was just, you know, a little more assurance. It was a bit tricky trying to figure out these angles and bevels, trying to get them squared up in order for me to, in order for me to brad nail them together. The first square did give me some trouble. Everything wanted to move, everything wanted to move around. Nothing really would stay. And just having to tr try and figure out how to hold everything and get everything to stay still, and also have my fingers out of the way in case one of the brand nails wanted to go out one of the sides but after some finagling you kind of kind of get a rhythm going on with it after all the squares were put together i decided to make a post cap as well the post cap measured three and a half inches by three and a half and all i did was cut it square and gate and just gave it a nice routed edge just to give it a little more character I also went ahead and make those countersinks at the top of the piece. Put this post cap onto the posts themselves. We're going to start off with one. We'll start off with attaching one. Line it with the reference on the back. We'll pre-jill the hole on the post itself. And then we'll add some glue. After that, I went ahead and also pre-drilled everything just so anything just so nothing would split on me and also whenever i was fitting this post cap to the uprights i also went ahead and pre-drilled through the uprights so after i got the first two on the one side flipped it over and i had to use the scrap piece in order to create that angle for the other two uprights going into the post cap as you can see I'm pre-drilling everything just to make sure none of these uprights split on me. After everything was put together, I, it was time to stand up the trellis and start to install the squares that would go up the trellis. So when installing the first square, the very bottom square, it's important to have good spacing because then everything will be referenced off of this first square. So from the ground to the bottom of the first square was to be 16 inches long. So I cut a scrap piece of wood at 16 inches just to give me the correct spacing from the garage floor up to that first piece. And then I would clamp everything together and get that ready for screws. Next thing on my list was to make the decorative piece that would go on top of the whole trellis on top of the post cap. It took me a while to find a design that I liked, but I found one and I decided to replicate it on my piece as best as I could. At first, I repeated the same design on all four sides without even thinking about two of those sides being cut off once I put this piece on the bandsaw and actually started cutting. For the tighter curves, it was a little, it was a little tricky, so what I did was just go back and forth, making small cuts into that curvature just made as many as I could, just going down the line, 
getting rid of as much material as I could. After making all these cuts, I grabbed the chisel and just broke everything up on both sides. After that, I had to mimic everything on the other two sides. So I went back to the bandsaw, cut everything together. After getting all those pieces broken out of there and getting it to roughly a shape that I was wanting, I realized that I didn't have a spindle sander and I didn't know how I was gonna sand these pieces down. But then I remembered that my wife actually has a Dremel. So it came with an attachment with a small little sander. So that's what I used. It did the job. I tried to sand it as smooth as I could, but with the Dremel tool, it was very, very touchy just having to figure out the correct speed to go at and the angle but we got to send it down to the best as we could after that i went through the process of adding all the screws to the square pieces on the trellis and getting that attached to the uprights again i made sure to use that 16 inch scrap piece for spacing to make sure everything was spaced out correctly after installing all of those screws i installed the other accent pieces with the arrow with the arrow tips just found the center of all the boards and got them to relatively the same height. I drew some lines on them to act as reference lines. After I got those centered up and screwed together, the trellis was complete. And then all that was left was to add the top decorative piece. And that's the end of the video, guys. I hope y'all enjoyed the video. Super easy project. Like I said, it may look a little discouraging with all the bevels and the angles and the miters and all that but i promise you if you follow along with my video or matthew peach's video you really shouldn't have any issues like i said i'll leave his video down in the description down below so you can check that out please be sure to leave any comments or questions down below also be sure to hit the like button and the subscribe button for more beginner woodworking videos again thank you so much for sticking around and i'll see you on the next video